Superposition is an important property that solutions of differential equations obey. It is a way to generate new solutions, and in fact, it's a way to characterize the general solution of such equations. So let's go ahead and explain superposition first in the case of homogeneous equations. Are we going to take a specific example here, uh, which is very representative of the general case where you have y double dot plus 2 y dot minus cosine t uh, y is equal to zero. It is the fact that this equation has a zero right-hand side that makes the equation homogeneous. So let's go ahead and call this equation zero. It is linear because y appears linearly in each of the terms and t may appear non-linearly. Here we have cosine t, uh, but that's fine. That's still a linear equation in y. And the question, uh, as always, is to characterize the solution y of t of such an equation. So what superposition says is that if you have two solutions, y1 and y2, whether you know there's formulas or not, it doesn't matter. The claim is that if you form the superposition y equals a y1 plus b y2, where a and b are numbers, they're constants and not functions of time, then that is also a solution of equation zero. So it's a very simple procedure for generating new solutions. Let's see why that would be the case. We can try to see if equation zero is satisfied from our definition here of y. We would uh, go ahead and write that you have two time derivatives of the combination a y1 plus b y2. Then we have two times ddt of a y1 plus b y2 minus cosine t a y1 plus b y2. We'd like to know whether that's zero or not. So let's see, when we have two derivatives here hitting a combination, uh, the, it's going to be distributed to the different terms. The constants are going to go in front of the derivatives and we'll have a y1 double dot plus b y2 double dot. We say the derivative here, two derivatives is a linear operator. And the same thing is going to happen with the DDT. We'll have 2AY1 dot plus 2BY2 dot. And then we'll have minus cosine T AY1 minus cosine T BY2. Now we can group together the terms that involve y1 and those that involve y2 for the first, third, and fifth term here. We'll see that when we add them up together, we'll get zero by assumption because y1 was assumed to solve equation zero. And then for the other terms here involving y2, we can also group them and we see that when we add them up, we also get zero because y2 was assumed to solve the equation as well. So we obtain that the whole thing is equal to zero. Therefore, y solves the equation zero. In terms of vocabulary, we say that a y1 plus b y2 is a linear combination of y1 and y2. And in fact, this procedure will give you the general solution of equation zero as soon as y1 and y2 are different in the sense that one is not a multiple of the other. So we can claim this is in fact the general solution of equation zero, provided we haven't taken the same solution twice, but they're different. And that means that y2 is different from some constant times y1. So here's some number alpha. That happens to be the way to generate the general solution here of the homogeneous equation. It's linear combinations that achieve that. Uh, so that's the significance of superposition in the homogeneous case. So let's see what happens now in the inhomogeneous case. We're going to go ahead and write now two equations that uh, are going to be with right-hand sides, they're going to be non-zero. So let's label them equation one, equation two. We'll have, uh, we'll change letters. We'll use the function x of t now for the first equation. We'll have x double dot plus two x dot minus cosine tx. For the left-hand side, I use the same thing as before. I'm going to put a right-hand side now, f, f of t. f of t is given to us. 
and we seek x of t in this equation, and then equation 2 for y, and y double dot plus 2y dot minus cosine. It's very important that the left-hand sides be exactly the same here when you do superposition. Now we're going to go ahead and write a function g of t, which again is given to us. And the question is, if we go ahead and write a combination, a linear combination of x and y, that will become z, z equals to ax plus by, what equation does z obey? And uh, the algebra to answer this question is very similar to what we did earlier. We go ahead and try the left-hand side of the equation, but now on z, you do z double dot plus 2z dot minus cosine tz. And now you do a calculation where you use equation 3 here for z, and then we end up with an expression involves x and y, then we use equation 1 and 2 successively, and what we'll end up with is a right-hand side that is going to be a f of t plus b g of t. So z, the linear combination of the individual solutions of the inhomogeneous equations, will obey an equation of its own where the left-hand side is unchanged, but the right-hand side is a linear combination of the right-hand sides we started from. So that's an important fact here of superposition. And we want to go further. We want to have a characterization of the general solution of an equation like 1 here, for instance. Uh, we managed to obtain in the homogeneous case the general solution of the equation. Uh, and we'd like to make a similar claim for this case. And the way to do that is to check out the special case of this construction here. Uh, when a is equal to b is equal to 1, when f is taken to be a non-zero function, but when g is taken to be the zero function. So as a result of g being equal to zero, we'll have that equation two is the same as the homogeneous equation we saw earlier that we called equation zero. Let's see what happens when we plug in those parameters here. Uh, we'll have that x is going to be a solution of equation one, and we'll have that y is going to be a solution of equation 2, which is now the same thing as equation 0. And we'll have that z, when a equals b equals 1, we'll have that the sum will still be a solution of what equation? Well, the right-hand sides will now be, let's check them out, we'll have f and 0 for g. So the right-hand side is f, so we still have a solution of equation 1. We have x and we have z, they're both solutions of equation 1. Now, that is fine, that is what superposition is about, but we can make a much stronger claim. In fact, here, for x, we're going to pick a particular solution, and for y, we're going to pick the, any solution of equation 2. So let's go ahead and write that x is a particular solution. But now, yh will be any solution, will be the general solution of equation 2. And uh, we have already seen what that means. That means that y will be the linear combination a y1 plus b y2 with arbitrary constants a and b of two solutions that are different, y1 and y2. So let's say you have the general solution. Then the claim is that z formed as a superposition of x plus y, which is now going to be z equals xp plus yh. That will be the general solution of equation 1 general solution of one. So you see, it doesn't really matter what particular solution here you choose for xp. If you plug in the general solution for yh and you do xp plus yh, then you'll have the general solution of equation one. That's the recipe for generating the general solution. So we can go ahead and call this a proposition. And we can prove this proposition. And the blue claim that those are solutions, so that z is a solution of 1, that's just superposition. We've already done it, so that's clear that it is going to be a solution. The only thing we really have to convince ourselves of is that that's the green claim that the solutions cannot be obtained by any other means. If you have a solution, then it must be of this form. It must be an xp plus yh, no matter what xp is. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's pick z to be any solution of equation 1, the inhomogeneous equation. Again, I remind you, the one that had a uh, right-hand side. And let's pick an xp, which is a particular solution. So we're going to say fix xp, a particular solution. So it's fixed ahead of time. 
but we'd like to make a claim about Z, which is uh, any such solution. Uh, then if you take the difference between Z and XP, uh, we can apply superposition again and obtain that this solves its own differential equation with the same left-hand side, but the right-hand side will be the subtraction of the right-hand sides for Z and XP. And again, that's the same equation one, the right-hand side uh, is going to be F, so the right-hand side will be F minus F and that's zero. In other words, Z minus XP, where Z is completely arbitrary and XP is fixed ahead of time, that solves the homogeneous equation. So that's equation two which we said is the same thing as equation zero, the one that has a zero right-hand side. And so what have we obtained here? We've obtained that Z minus XP can be written as a YH, a Y sub H, a solution of the homogeneous equation. So Z has got to be equal to XP plus yh. No matter what z is, it's an arbitrary solution of equation one. It has to be to have an expression that has the particular solution as the first term and some solution the homogeneous equation as the second term. There is no way for the solution of equation one to be written in any other form uh, than this. It must be written in this form. So this concludes the proof z is xp plus yh. So that's the way to express a general solution of an inhomogeneous problem. It's a very general principle here, superposition. And again, that's perhaps worth remembering. This is something that recurs in the study of differential equations. So let's say this equation here in the proposition in words. Again, one more time, the general solution of the inhomogeneous equation is obtained as the sum of a particular solution of the inhomogeneous problem and the general solution of the homogeneous problem. So if we go ahead and write out what it is, let's conclude. The conclusion is that the general solution must be XP plus AY1 plus BY2, where A and B are arbitrary constants. That will give us the general solution. And again, any XP will do, any particular solution will do for this. And uh, any Y1 and Y2 different solutions of the homogeneous problem will do as well. So this is a very general principle to build general solutions of ODEs, not just limited to the second order. You can do that with nth order equations. You can go to higher order and the principle is the same, but this will not hold for nonlinear equation. There is no superposition principle for nonlinear equations.